when I say, you know, on, on crime and punishment, I'm the guy that's like, uh, lock him up and throw away the key. Listen, I'm obviously not talking about, uh, you know, Sylvia says, you just wait, Ryan, until your kid uh, finds himself in trouble with the police. Ooh, that's, um, that's a good here, point, Number though. one, I'm talking, I'm, first uh, of all, and we, Lily point. Grace is on standby. She's going to be late for, for her junior high school class today because she's hanging out with us. And so I don't want to go too long into story time. Let me say a couple of things. Number one, I'm talking about the people that are getting out under our loosey-goosey Canadian laws that have no business getting out. Serial uh, sex predators, serial violent offenders, people that have not yet met the criteria for dangerous offender, but everybody knows they're dangerous. Um, maybe You're not talking about drug offenders. I'm, or, well, well you know, and I'm not, I'm not talking about people that like stole a loaf. This is like the, the whole like Charles Dickens model of the guy <laughs> that like stole a loaf of bread to feed his family yeah, and yeah, found, yeah. you know, Les Miserables, maybe a better example. But like, I'm talking about the ones that are obvious. And I've shared with, this is nothing new that I'm sharing on the show. Um, but those are the ones where I just have zero patience. And if you're on police mailing lists and things like that, like, like most talk show hosts and journalists are, then you're getting these emails all the time with pictures of, of the guy that you just go, okay, number one, I'm crossing the street. If I see that guy, tats all over the face and cuts and scrapes and bruises. And yes, I am absolutely right now stereotyping certain violent offenders. It's obvious. I think everyone gets Anybody those feelings. Like though. real talk. When you look at these pictures and you go, the police say there's a high likelihood to offend and shout out to the police officers that are on the down low doing what they can to monitor these people, keep them in check, surveil them as best they can as they're legally allowed. But come on. So that's my position on that. But Sylvia, as I've also shared on the show before, and I'll say very quickly, I am a young offender. Okay. I am one that went through the system. Uh, it was not a violent offense, but it was sure a stupid offense when I was 15 years old, throwing something at a car. Thank God nobody was hurt. Looking back, I mean, when I was looking back by my 16th birthday, I couldn't believe I'd done it. Now I'm 47, I can't believe I did it. I'm totally embarrassed about it. I thank my lucky stars every single day that nothing bad happened. I went before the courts. I went through the system. There was that, that whole thing around giving back to community, paying those reparations, meeting with the family I affected financially, and otherwise contributing to society to make sure that things were made right. I get it. I've been through the system. I, I, I am a young offender. I had the record wiped when I turned 18. Thank goodness it was in the rear view mirror. But I learned from that. So I get it. I'm not talking about the dumb stuff. I'm not talking about, the, the, I'm talking about when children are targeted by serial offenders. And, and I get that not everybody agrees. We're going to get letters from people that, that talk about the, you know, the guy that like saw the light and like found the Lord and, and whatever in prison. And now he's like leading a nonprofit and great. <laughs> There are those stories, but there's also the stories of the guy that gets out. He's not supposed to be out. You know, RCMP transport him from Alberta Beach to Chinatown in Edmonton, and he bludgeons two business owners to death with a bat. Mm -hmm. Like, there's those stories as well, and that's where I get fired up. Let uh, us know what you think to talk at ryanjesperson.com. Yeah, I was just going to say that, too. I'm the same way. I'm, I'm someone who has always preached his whole life, like rehabilitation. I believe everyone can be rehabilitated. But as I get older, and, you know, I say this all the time on the show, I mean— those dangerous offenders, those people you're talking about that we see let out after five, six years, the people I'm most worried about, I say it all the time, are people who hurt women, children, and animals. I just, I don't see full rehabilitation for people like that. And if I do, I think it takes longer than sitting in a cell for five years and getting back out and having to go around your neighborhood and say, hey, I... You know, mm. I'm a pedophile or I'm a domestic abuser. I'm whatever. Yeah. Those people, I just... I, I, I'm not going to say throw the book at them, but I think it takes lo a long time to teach someone how not to do that again to someone and why they did it. And, 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 I, don't, and I think some of those people never be rehabilitated. I think 100%. they deserve to sit in a four by four, eight by eight cell their entire life. Four by four. Yeah. <laughs> four by four is small. <laughs> that, that's a little small. That's like the clink. That's the, that, that's like the, the that's when you decide yeah. to run for federal <laughs> politics. You can run on that. We're yeah. going to, we're going to shrink all the jail cells to four by four.